Hello, and welcome to week six, unit four of application development for SAP Business by Design. In this unit, we're gonna look at patch solutions. Now, we've already created our content, we developed our solution, and we deployed it to another system. Uh, now, what if we decide that we want to develop some more content there, we might have a bug to fix, some other change that's needed, how do we do that? Now we talked in the last unit about when you deploy your solution uh, specifically around the assemble and download step. Once I do that, my solution is locked and I can't make any other changes. So how do I enable it uh, to be unlocked and allow for more changes? And that's where patch solutions come in. Uh, a patch solution is how we continue development of a solution in the SAP Cloud Application Studio uh, going forward after the initial assemble and download. Um, from there we will uh, go ahead and continue to work in this patch solution going forward for all of our changes. Now a few things about patch solutions. Uh, one thing I want to mention is that you should always create your patch solution in the same development you te uh, the same test the same tenant uh, you developed in. Um, it's good to keep your development to one tenant and not to multiple. For example, if you had uh, a test tenant that you used for development and another test tenant for test, uh, don't create your patch solution in the new test tenant. Keep it to your original tenant that you developed in. Uh, there's no technical limitation behind creating it in a different tenant. It's just good to keep your development to one place. If you just have one test tenant that you're using for development and test, perfect, you're fine there. Um, it's important not to try and create patch solutions in multiple tenants at the same time. It should always be in one place at one time. That is technically a must, uh, but uh, try to keep your development to one tenant always. Uh, now, if you're working in a partner development tenant and you go to create a patch solution, it's just going to take the same solution uh, and unlock it and create a new version and you can continue development there. Then you would follow the process of deploying it uh, again to the customer's test tenant or production tenant. If you're working in a customer test tenant, you're gonna see something a little bit different. You'll see it actually uh, create a copy of the original solution, uh, a second solution, and it'll be in version three, and that will then be open for development. Uh, so it's a little bit slightly of a different process. Uh, and this copying of the patch solution and creation of a new solution only happens once. Uh, from then, uh, your, this new patch solution will always just be updated with new version numbers, uh, and you'll continue to work in that. And that's what we'll see in our scenario today. Um, as you do that, and you continue to assemble and download content from this patch solution, you'll see that it also always keeps the content and the namespace within um, the original solutions namespace. So although in, in the tenant I'm developing in, it looks like a new namespace, the content will always be reverted back to the original namespace. Uh, that way I can easily deploy it to my target tenants. Um, and you know, I'll point out where we can see that uh, if you have multiple test tenants on the same system, um, the actual system, then as you go ahead and deploy to one test tenant within that system, um, it, after it's done activating in that target tenant, it'll look for any other tenants for that same customer on the system, the actual physical system um, that exists that have this same solution. And if that solution exists on those other customer tenants, it will then try to auto deploy the patch uh, update itself to those other tenants as well. And it'll show the status of that. Um, although we won't have that here, I'll show you where you can see that. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the SAP Cloud Application Studio. I'm logged in with my uh, development user who is also an admin authorized user. And I'm still in the implementation manager. And what I'm gonna do is uh, press this create patch. And this time I'm only doing it from my original solution this one time. After this, I'm always gonna work on my patch solution. Um, I would never come back to my original solution unless I wanted to um, specifically manually upload a new patch to this solution um, or enable it for business users. So you'll see here, there's a button here that says um, solution enablement for business users in cloud solution. Uh, and it shows enabled right now and I can disable it. And basically this means that this solution uh, is what customers or any users in this tenant, any business users would actually see when they're working in the system. Um, now, as I create my patch solution, I have the option to say which one of the two, my patch solution or the original solution, is enabled. Um, and so I can uh, set it so that business users are testing on one solution uh, and not the other. So if I'm in a single test tenant for all of my development, 
I can actually say, okay, well, let's keep the original solution enabled for business users. They'll always test with that. And only in development will I use my um, uh, patch solution uh, to be able to develop. Once I'm happy, I can deploy that patch back to the original solution. And then business users always have one version they're working off of that's not changing unless I actually deploy an updated patch. Um, otherwise, I can keep the patch solution enabled and then everybody would test there. Uh, it's just then that they see the content changing as we're developing. Uh, and of course, in a development system, uh, and when you're developing, you may see inconsistencies at times from the front end if you're changing or activating content at that moment. Um, if I have multiple system, systems, so I have one test tenant that I use for development, a second that I use for test, and then my actual production system, uh, I can obviously only, I won't have the patch solution in the other two tenants, just in my first tenant that I'm developing in. So I don't have to worry about it there, but then in my development tenant, I can keep the patch solution uh, enabled for business users. That way I can test directly in that, in that tenant um, and I won't have to uh, worry about switching in between. Uh, we consider a development tenant, so we won't have to worry about having a more stable version to, to test with. Um, so this is basically going to go through. It's going to make a copy of it. Um, and you'll notice that uh, the original solution will still say as version one. It'll still have the status assembled. In the new solution, the patch solution, it'll be version three. Um, and the status will be in development. Um, so a lot of people ask, well, where does version two go then? There should be one, two, three, not one, three. Uh, and version two is consumed behind the scenes uh, by the system. Uh, we don't see it. We don't have to worry about it. Uh, just know that once you go to three, you're okay. There's nothing wrong. You didn't miss anything. It's just how the framework works. And then we'll continue to develop in this, this solution, this patch solution. We'll be able to uh, take the solution, make changes to it, and then continue the uh, deployment of it as we would the original solution. Um, now, the thing is when we get into the patch solution and we actually go to make changes, uh, we will have some restrictions when we make changes. Uh, and this goes into uh, maintenance mode, uh, which we'll go into detail in the next unit about. Uh, but with that, we'll have certain things that we can and can't do within the patch solution to make changes. Uh, but once I make changes to the patch solution, I can go ahead and deploy it to other tenants. Now, uh, if you have uh, either one system or multiple systems for testing, uh, or tenants, I should say, you can continue to develop more and more um, solutions and versions of your patch solution. Um, so if I have, uh, let's say I have either, I'm testing and I've gone up to version five or six or seven, um, I can keep testing on these versions and I can keep my production at a stable state with maybe my initial version one of my solution. Um, and only until I get to version seven, let's say, am I happy with what's, what I have and what's been developed and maybe at that time, then I actually deploy version seven to production. Um, so amongst your tenants, it's okay to have different versions. There's no restriction that you keep them all in sync all the time. Um, obviously, once you've finished your development and you're at an okay state, it's good to have, it's nice to have everything in sync at that time. But of course, you then may come across a time when you need to make more changes um, or you wanna try new things out for uh, an upcoming project. Um, so then it's, uh, it's up to you just to make sure you manage the version history and you have an idea that if they are different, why they're different and what the changes may be. Uh, and that's a really important point, the, the point about changes, right, is that since we don't have necessarily a change history in the, the SAP Cloud Application Studio, that if you're up on patch version uh, 9 or 7, uh, in our scenario we're talking about, and your original solution in production is version 1, um, and you want to know what the difference are, you need to make sure that you've uh, recognize that and so maybe somehow track that during your development. Uh, you could be you could have doc, documents that you store that uh, have these kind of changes where you said, okay, well, we developed these objects, uh, these screens, whatever kind of artifacts you might want, uh, or we made changes to uh, code in these different areas. Um, and so that's uh, for you to, to track within your organization and your team. Um, so just to be aware of that. Uh, and then uh, that way, when you go to deploy in different places, you know what's going on. Uh, but from there, you can continue to deploy different patches, um, or you can continue, if you didn't have multiple test tenants, just uh, update the original solution with each of, each of the patch versions as you go. And then once you're happy, deploy to production. Um, and so this is kind of the process that will follow as we continue to uh, enhance the solution and, and change it 
and evolve it over time during the development that we do after it's been initially deployed. Um, and we can always create all kinds of new content here. Uh, it's just the maintenance mode is a restriction around the existing content that's there. Um, so with that, uh, this is going to go ahead and create my new patch. Um, and we'll see once it, in the next unit, uh, going ahead and actually making changes. And then we'll actually, in the next unit, do the deployment of this patch solution. Um, so for now, we wanted to at least talk about patch solutions and, and what they are um, and how do we kind of get started with them. And you can see I was still in the implementation manager uh, creating my patch solution, uh, actually generating it, uh, and it's going to come out with it. And, and I'll have the new version number, which will be version 3 at first. And then as I continue development, I want to stick in that patch solution, and I'll, um, I'll always go to there and say create new patch. Um, I won't go back to the original solution again. Once I've uh, gone from the original solution once, that's fine. I don't need to go back to it ever again. So I'll stay in my patch solution. I'll continue to create new versions there uh, with the create patch button. And once it's copied that, that, once I'm at that point where I'm creating new patches in the patch solution, um, it'll just update the version number and open it for development. You don't actually see with every version a new copy of your solution being generated within your tenant. Uh, so it keeps it within that tenant, uh, it just updates the version numbers, and then I continue development there. Uh, and then I have the option, of course, to say which is enabled uh, and what should uh, users, business users be testing against, which of those solutions uh, can they see. Uh, and so that's really uh, depends on my uh, the, the customer's tenant landscape um, and where the solution exists. It may not have it on all the tenants that are there, so it may not matter, uh, but that's something that I'll want to uh, monitor myself. And then I just continue development and, um, excuse me, and then uh, allow the cycle to continue basically. And we'll continue on and on. So that's it for patch solutions. And the next unit, uh, our final unit, we'll talk about maintenance mode. Um, and we'll go ahead and look at what changes are like and go back to the help content to point out a few things around that. Uh, and then we can look at the deployment of that final patch solution. So with that, thank you very much.